Director General, Director General, Nigeria Maritime Administration and Safety Agency, Dimasa uh, Ispaaka. We're glad to have you back with us, uh, Dr. Uh, Bashir Jamo. Uh, so let's look at uh, 2020, for instance. How were you able to navigate the uh, impact of COVID-19 on the maritime sector? Thank you very much, Claire. And good morning again. Good morning, Kingsley. And good morning, my Honorable Minister. It's very difficult to discuss the progress of uh, 2021 without uh, reflecting back on the impact of this uh, COVID-19 in the 2020s. Uh, you know, we had a lot of uh, setback, the issue of safety hazards, uh, you know, the crew fatigue, uh, you know, we do have a lot of problems of human uh, errors. The issue of insurance claim and losses in terms of cargo damages claim, and then maintenance problem as well as breakdown of so many, uh, you know, equipment. Uh, the Honorable Minister and Mogadu uh, discussed a lot on the issues of this COVID-19, and we are trying to live with it. Uh, but the important thing is that, uh, uh, you know, in shipping, there is no how we can discuss effectively without the issue of CPRs. CPRs are very, very important. They are the human elements of, uh, of shipping. And uh, while everywhere is locked down, you know, uh, all over the world, it's only the CPRs continue to be up and doing. But we thank God with the little uh, efforts we are making, things still continue to move from one angle to another. And as you know, 90% of goods that we have all over the world has been moved by ship. So as such, we cannot discuss the impact or the effects of this COVID-19 without uh, discussing uh, the CPRs. Uh, uh, on our own, we did our best releasing our own uh, marine notices uh, for the crew change so that we can reduce the fatigues of these uh, uh, young and vibrant workers all over the world. And uh, we also try to see that uh, we declare them as essential workers. So all over the world, they have been recognized as essential workers. The Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency, they are one of those agencies that started releasing such a uh, uh, marine notice and the IMO International Maritime Organizations recognize that. Now, having said that, what we will have to expect in the 2021 uh, is the issue of the maritime security. First of all, I would like to sincerely appreciate the Honorable Minister of Transportation, uh, who has been up and doing in terms of ensuring that the issue of deep blue projects has been taken up. Uh, this is uh, a contract awarded uh, since 2017. It has been going up and down due to certain political reasons and other things. And uh, it's the first of its kind in Africa. Uh, and uh, what we are seeing today, uh, the emergence of uh, total spectrum of the solution of maritime security, not only in Nigeria, not in Nigerian territorial waters only, but also up to the Gulf of Guinea. And uh, the entire gamut of the security apparatus uh, of uh, Nigerian maritime domain rely heavily with this, uh, uh, the Deep Blue project. Uh, as of today, we receive more than 80% of these uh, maritime assets. And uh, if we don't have this uh, security, there will be no transport, as you can see our own revenue continue to dwindle because of the lack of uh, effective security, not only within Nigeria, but also in the Gulf of Guinea. Uh, recently, we have gone around to inspect these assets, and the assets that are well uh, received, more than 85% of the assets uh, at hand. What we is just left now is the human elements in terms of training. And this training also has been affected by the COVID-19. Uh, most of the country now they started opening up and uh, the countries that are you know uh, addressing this issue of trainings includes uh, Europe and uh, United States of America by 18th of January we expect to send another set of trainees uh, so that uh, 
we can deploy this asset within the first quarter of uh, 2021. By the time we deploy this asset, we are saying bye-bye to the issue of uh, insecurity. Uh, the second segment, what we will have to expect, is the uh, issue of uh, uh, the SPOMO Act, that is the suppression of uh, uh, piracy and other maritime offenses act, 2019. Uh, in that also, I would like to sincerely appreciate uh, our lawmakers by, for passing that particular act and Mr. President for accenting to that bill. And then the Honorable Minister of Transport, who is now looking into the guidelines for the implementation of that, that act. Uh, with this, we have a total framework, uh, legal framework, to be able to uh, uh, you know, address the issue of the legal aspect of this uh, maritime insecurity. Before now, whenever we arrest these hoodlums and criminals, we don't have specific laws to try them. But now we have uh, the legal framework. Uh, as you are aware, we already started trying most of these criminals uh, with the conviction secured uh, at uh, Patakot uh, Federal High Court. Uh, our three foreigners have been tried, and then they have been convicted. We still have the issue of 10 uh, trials in Lagos High Court. And then the issue of uh, uh, Calabar also is on. We expect before the end of February, we secure some uh, conviction again. This is sending a very good signals, not only to those criminals, but also to international community, that Nigeria is not sleeping. Uh, the government they are up and doing, and they are doing their best to ensure that the maritime security issues have been tackled. Now, after the maritime security, the most important aspect, again, has to do with the maritime safety in transportation. Uh, my, my brother, Dr. Magdalu, discussed a lot on the issue of safety, and uh, Mr. Kingsley asked a number of questions to do with the uh, aspect of accident of boats, Ms. Sharp, and other things. It doesn't stop there. Even the international waters, we do have this accident. And we are trying our best. What we expect in 2021, it has to do the total emergence of the global maritime distress system. The global maritime distress system is an internationally recognized distress and radio system for ships. Wherever they have, they are in distress, so they can be able to get in touch with the nearest maritime administration of that country so in nigeria we have four uh you know centers uh, presently we concluded the implementation and installation of uh, equipment at the regional maritime coordinating center in Krikri here in lagos uh, that one is up and doing we are now moving to the taco bay taco bay is almost completed here also in lagos uh, we are commencing the oron and pocados with this, we are saying bye-bye to the issues of maritime distress. Wherever a ship is having problems all over the, around the Africa, you know, the uh, Regional Maritime Coordinating Center in Krikri warehouse nine countries. And the logic is behind it, wherever in, you are in the African countries and you are in distress, you can be able to get the next. For instance, in Nigeria now, you have a problem around Togo. Nigeria can be able to get that information with the press of button from your ship. I will now have to connect with the Benin Republic. Benin Republic will now connect with uh, Togo, and so on and so forth. So that's, those are the nine countries where, that we have to do that. Uh, additionally, we are working hard for the first time to ensure that we remove all the wrecks so that we can have a safety navigational areas within our own waterways to make sure that we secure that our navigational areas. Uh, we have concluded the identification of those wrecks in our territorial waters, and we marked them. What we are now, we are going through the procurement process to ensure that we obtain approval from the Federal Executive Council to commence removal of these uh, uh, wreck removals. Uh, that's on the issue of safety. Now, the next stage we will have to expect in the 2021 
is the issue of shipping development. In, when you are talking of shipping development, you talk about fleet expansion. Uh, I was wondering, uh, Dr. Bashir Jamal, uh, thanks a lot for your detailed explanation. But the, the beginning with one of the last points you just made, it's probably a function of the enabling uh, statute. That's to say how NIMASA functions. But let's face it, why would NIMASA require the Federal Executive Council approval for it to clear the waterways, that's to say the high seas or otherwise, of wrecks and derelicts? Why? Uh, that is very important questions, uh, Kingsley. It's a function of uh, fund. Kingsley, removal of uh, uh, wrecks in our own uh, navigational areas uh, is not uh, a, a, an overnight appear, and uh, it's not an issue of for one million or two million. Uh, this, this is a capital intensive, so it has to go into a serious scrutiny. I can tell you, uh, Kingsley, removal of wrecks from Badagri to Tinkan Island, uh, we estimated not less than uh, 28 to 40 ships under our own sea. That is causing a lot of harbor. So it is a big ticket transaction. Now, to remove those wrecks from Badagri to Tinkan cost Nigerian government not less than 3.7 billion naira. So this is not an issue of an individual to take. Now, you are now going to look at the issue of a Western zone, that is the Lagos territorial water. Then you move to Eastern zone, which is around Patakot. You go to Central zone. If only from Badagri to think and cost us over 3.7 billion, you can imagine when you escalate the entire cost to the whole uh, Nigerian territorial water. I assure you, we are not going to part away with not less than 12 billion. And in so doing, the federal government must know what process, what are the procedures, where are these wrecks, how large are these wrecks, and then remember. After spending this much, the REX itself is an asset because when you remove it, you will have to recycle it and people will come and buy. The government would like to know what value are we getting back from this asset. So it's not a matter of uh, a one, one day affair. Uh, you can see if you littered your own cars, dead cars around the street, you can imagine what kind of havoc can cause to the individual motorists talk less of our own waterways because you may not know what is under the water. You are navigating safely with your ship. At the end of the day, you find yourself crashing with those uh, ships. So uh, that is what the procurement process requires. Each and every segment of government, they have their own threshold. The threshold of expenditure for, remo for removing wrecks in as far as the issue of our procurement, National Procurement Act is concerned, it must go to the level of the uh, Federal Executive Council. Jamal, thank you. We, we have a number of tweets, but before we take them, just a last, this question for, for you. I, I know in the past we've had um, a huge number of uh, youths from the Niger Delta uh, being trained as seafarers, you know, quite a number of them. And the complaint at the time was when they do get the skills, they come back with no, no jobs. So has that changed? And um, where are we on the issue of a national shipping line? Well, thank you very much, Claire. The, uh, I, I just mentioned uh, this issue of fleet, fleet expansion in terms of what we are trying to focus in the 2021. In Nigeria, you know, investing in ship uh, acquisition is a very huge uh, amount. Unfortunately, our financial institutions, they don't have long-time loans. You know, when you are going to borrow, uh, in Nigeria, maybe the, 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 the window that you can be, you can get, maybe maximum two to three, four years. When you are acquiring a ship, it takes you not less than 20 years to start reaping the benefit of that. So our financial institutions, they are not uh, structured uh, in such a manner that uh, uh, individuals that intend to invest in uh, shipping, 
uh, procurement of sheep, they will have to go and get such loans. Uh, unfortunately, most of the stakeholders rely heavily on what we call cabotage vessel financing funds. And uh, uh, in 2021, we expect to see for the first time this particular fund will now come to the stream. We started collecting this uh, money since 2003, but for one reason or the other, we were unable to disburse such funds. So with the disbursements of funds, Nigeria will have the opportunity to start procuring ships that these young Nigerians will be able to benefit for employment of this. Uh, well, I agree with you, a number of them will come back from their training without a job, but I want to assure you, Claire, that we have a number of them that has been recruited both internally and externally. I had a discussion on one of the former governors of Bino Estate who sponsored some of his uh, you know, uh, citizens uh, from Bino Estate uh, who affirmed to me that most of those that he uh, sponsored into this particular scheme, which is a special uh, policy introduced by the federal government of CPR's development program, they are now engaged in foreign ships. They are not even in Nigeria. And if you listen, if you hear their own salary, you'll be shocked. So while we are having a number of them without job, we still have a number of them securing jobs, not even locally in Nigeria, but internationally. And we are working our best. By the time the issue of CBFF comes into school stream, we will now see the emergence of a lot of employment windows and opportunities for these younger Nigerians. Uh, all right, uh, Dr. Jamal, thank you very much. Uh, we still hope to retain you and uh, we'll get back to you in the course of the remainder of the conversation. You're watching Good Morning Nigeria live on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority. We're taking a short break now. When we return, we continue with our guests. Uh, the Gulf of Guinea at some point had overtaken uh, the Gulf of Aden, where the Somali pirates were operating. Assuming you have the numbers, what do we know at this time about the incidents of piracy and robberies uh, on the high seas around the Gulf of Guinea, of which uh, Nigeria is a part? Let's say, for instance, in 2019, there were so many incidents of piracy. There were so many incidents of sea robberies. In 2020, this is what we had. In 2021, this is our KPI. Our target is to ensure that we reduce drastically by 50% or 25% once you begin to uh, deploy your platforms. And it's specifically talking about this incidents of piracy and armed robberies. Of course, we are concerned about crude oil theft. These are matters that NATI and indeed the uh, uh, National Economic Council have also focused on. What do we know about these incidents? Uh, thank you very much, Kingsley. I think this, uh, the issue of these incidents is very worrisome. Worrisome in the sense that uh, we have been hearing the issues of Somali, the issue of Gulf of Eden, the issue of, uh, you know, Southeast uh, Asia and the Indian Ocean in terms of uh, uh, insecurity. So one thing with this insecurity is uh, is an international phenomenon. Uh, in those days, when uh, the issue of uh, Somali uh, hope on doing, you know, in Nigeria, we, we were a little bit uh, calm and uh, we thought that all is well. So, uh, Mr. Kingsley, if I can describe the issue of insecurity, it's just like a pure water. You go to Tinkan Island Sea, you draw uh, a kind of uh, uh, the nylon of pure water into the sea. If you watch that pure water, nylon, it will move and circulate up to America and come back to where you drop it. And that is the issue of insecurity in our own waters. Anywhere you hear of insecurity, if you don't if you don't tackle it, so it will come back to you. Uh, today, uh, when we used to hear Somali as the most dangerous water, Nigeria has been tagged as the most dangerous water in terms of uh, maritime security. But uh, uh, Mr. Kingsley, uh, all hope is not lost. Uh, the instances of crucial uh, and curtailed piracy is something that has to do with the international uh, affiliation. It's a kind of syndicated uh, business. 
But from your questions, what we expect in 2021, a couple of uh, weeks ago, we see the emergence of this uh, act, or maybe average in a week, six times. So it's almost one vessel per day. Uh, but uh, we thank God uh, from two to three weeks ago, we have a little calm water now. Now, uh, this issue uh, of uh, maritime uh, deep blue assets is the greatest joker we have uh, as of today. And uh, sincerely speaking, I must, to uh, I must to appreciate my Honorable Minister of Transportation because that singular policy or the singular assets, the singular spectrum of that, those assets was his own initiative. And this is how a uh, strategic leader is supposed to think. How do we, or what do we do? Because the entire asset, if you see it, for instance, if I have time, let me give you the, the number of assets we have. First, we have two special mission vessels, all kitted with communication gadgets that can see the, uh, what we call C4I, that is the center where our own intelligence has been gathered. Then we have four uh, unmanned drones. We have three special mission air, um, uh, helicopters. We have two special mission aircraft. We have 16 ammo tanks. We have 17 pass interceptors bots. Now, each of these assets can see and interface with each other gather information and pass to other you know uh, assets with that real time on time to be able to check such uh, any attack or any things that may come against our own territorial water now the information they are gathering it will be on air at sea and on land now, when you gather the entire information, you come with images. And these images comprises of the attack from the pirates, uh, attack on our pipelines in terms of oil, crude oil thefts, attack on armed banditry and armed robbery from these hoodlums. So at the end of the day, we have a total spectrum that we look into the entire gamut of security within our own territorial water. So, and, unfortunately, we, Dr. Jama, the clock is ticking away, and um, we, we just have to interrupt today and bring in the Honorable Minister. I'd just like to loop two questions into, into one. First, how, how are you handling the demand and security issues on the Abuja Kaduna Road? And with Africa now, um, uh, operating a single market, uh, did our transportation master plan